Look, Bumble knows you're exhausted by dating. All the, must not take yourself too seriously, and 6-1 since that matters, and what do I even say other than, hey? <sighs> well, that's why they're introducing an all-new Bumble, with exciting features to make compatibility easier, starting the chat better, and dating safer. They've changed, so you don't have to. Download the new Bumble now. It's the weekend, so relax and listen to some stories the whole family can enjoy. That's right, it's the Saturday Story Circle, here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. And now, Faux Fiction Audio brings you another case from the spiral-bound and sticky note files of Mickey McKinney, Boy Detective. Mickey McKinney, that mini-mystery man, solves the cases that plague the halls of Maple Ridge Middle School with his trusty partner and friend, Sam Hayes. No pet or project too lost, no cafeteria food too mysterious, no case too small when Mickey McKinney is on the job. Burners, I don't have time for this. I got an audition after school. Just get in there! Hey, sport. Haven't seen you in a couple days. Rhodes? What are you doing here? What's he doing here? Got a call from your partner. Said you needed a talking to. Why don't you sit down? I don't have time to... Sit. Down. That's better. You're not wearing your hat. I'm not a detective anymore. You're Jack McKinney's son. With or without that hat, detecting is in your blood. You might not remember this, but I gave that hat to your dad for his birthday. It was supposed to be a joke, on account of all those black and white films he would watch, but I never saw him without it after that. He called it his thinking cap. Well, like I've said, I've given up detecting, so I don't need it now. Given up? Because you can't solve this case? It's too hard for a McKinney to crack? Because all I'm doing is making things worse. I hurt Sam's feelings. I made AJ look bad. Dr. Schatz said he should have never even trusted me with the case. I'm going to stop you right there before that hole of self-pity you're digging gets any deeper. When you put on that hat for the first time, did you do it for fame and glory? The admiration of all your classmates? Or did you do it to make your world a better place, even if you weren't appreciated? In the second one. You know, your dad used to say, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. <laughs> Winston Churchill. Really? <laughs> oh heck. He told me that was something he made up. I should have known he was pulling my leg. <sighs> Take it from me, kid. A good friend is hard to find. And if your friends came to me to talk sense into you, you can't have messed up as bad as you think. Remember the first week we met, Mick? Tommy framed me by stealing the test answers, and you just stepped in to help, even though I was a complete stranger. And remember when the prank master tried to get me expelled? You told Principal Morgan that you knew I didn't do it, and wouldn't give up, even when we were running out of time. You've helped us both out over the last couple of months, Mickey, and now it's our turn. We're gathering evidence to tie all of the members of the newspaper team to the pranks, but we want you to be the one to wrap this up. <clears throat> so put your hat back on and let's wrap up this case once and for all. And never sing show tunes again! Please. <laughs> Look guys, this is really nice, but I still don't think I'm ready to get back in the game. Put that hat on or Burners will find a way to keep it on. Permanently. I do what she says, Mickey. I've been testing out some new stuff that makes rubber cement look like Elmer's glue. Hmm, <laughs> nice group of friends you got here, kid. Well, if that's it, should probably get back to the station before they think I disappeared during my lunch break. See you around. Alright, so check it out. While you were in retirement, I did some digging in the dumpster and found two bottles of blue and red tie-dye. I thought they'd been in there too long to get fingerprints, but Burners found one or two partial prints on the inside of the lid. Also, check out these photos in the hallway. <laughs> it took seven hours, but does this guy look familiar? Hmm. No. Oh, wait, wait. 
He's the guy that does cartoons. Harry, looks a little nervous, don't you think? Of course, I'd probably be nervous too if I was planning to release a bunch of frogs. Unfortunately, since we can't see the actual release or force Brittany and Cindy to give us their fingerprints and compare, this is still circumstantial at best. What if we had a mic somewhere in the newspaper room and waited for them to say something incriminating? We've got AJ already confessing, but we need to get all of them at once, and that could take too long. Besides, Burners heard AJ saying they were going to pull two more pranks. We have to stop them before that happens. Sam could run someone up the flagpole! I bet you she could scare someone into confessing. Or we'd all get expelled for endangering a student. <sighs> Spoil sport. Actually, I was planning on going back to the Chronicler to see if I could dig up any more dirt. There are perks to being a double agent. I'll save you the trip. AJ! I, uh... Save the explanation. I know you've been spying on me this whole time. And you used her as an alibi for when everyone decorated the lawn. Mickey, I see you're investigating again. Welcome back. What are you doing here, AJ? Please, I'm a reporter. Give me some credit. Sam's been asking around, trying to get the locations of my team during the pranks. Burners was seen sneaking out of the newspaper rooms yesterday. I've also been listening in the hall for a while. It wasn't hard to eavesdrop. We should really make a note to lock that door in the future. A little late now, though. Okay, you've got us. You still think you're behind everything. What are you going to do about it? Turn myself in. So, Mr. Harris, you are confessing to the incidents pulled by the so-called prank master? Yes, I am. And the reason for this being... I... Couldn't take the guilt. I, j I just wanted more students to read my paper, but it was wrong of me to pull those pranks. I'm sorry. I see. So, the pranks with the frogs and chairs and PA system? Yes, that was all me. You realize, of course, there will be disciplinary action for the last two weeks. Oh, I must say, I am very disappointed in you, Mr. Harris. You're an intelligent young man who could have had a bright future here. Hold on. You're not actually buying that he did this all by himself, are you? Mr. McKinney, you are here as a courtesy. AJ's what? Five feet? Five two? Five three? So what? I can buy that you let the frogs out. I can even peg you as the type to find a way to mess with the PA system and dump some dye in the school pool. Those are easy one-man jobs. But you actually want us to believe that you got all the chairs and desks out of the school by yourself? Yes, I did. Really? Would you mind telling me how? <sighs> I dropped Sam off after the movies, snuck out of the house after everyone was asleep, and, and moved the desks onto the lawn. It was pretty simple. Really? Simple? They're not that heavy. Yeah, the students' desks, no. But you forgot that the teachers' desks were out in the lawn, too. You want to tell me you moved one of those hundred-pound oak desks all by yourself? Mr. McKinney, is this really necessary? You hired me to catch the culprit, sir, and that's what I intend to do. Come on, Hercules, let's see you move this desk. Fine, I'll move it. <laughs> see? I can, I can move it. It just takes time. <laughs> Except when you drag it, the desk leaves scratch marks on the floor. There weren't any marks before, which means the desk was carried, not dragged out to the door. AJ, come on. We know you didn't do this by yourself. Why aren't you happy? I'm confessing just like you wanted me to. I did it! Do you hear me? I'm the prank master! So, the lab explosions that almost got Burners expelled, the sabotage at the football game, the stolen necklace at Burners' party, that was all you? What? Yes, that, that was all me. I... 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 I uh, wanted so bad to keep the paper going th that, that I did whatever I could to curate interesting news. I'm, I'm the one to blame for everything. No, he's not. I am. No, I am. Guys, what are you doing here? I told you I was going to handle it. I texted them. I thought they had a right to know. Uh, sir, uh, don't listen to them. I'm the one behind everything. You set up the PA broadcast system? You can barely operate our website. That was all me. Cindy and I put dye in the pool. Sorry. I also helped Harry release all the frogs. And we put all the chairs out on the lawn. So, you are saying that you all are guilty for these pranks? 
No! Yes. Sorry, boss, but we're not letting you take the blame for this by yourself. We all took a vote, and we'd rather all get expelled together than have you kicked out on your own. P please sir, they, they, they might have helped, but it was my idea. I deserve the blame. Like heck you're going down without us. We started this newspaper together, we're going to end it together. Yeah, he wants to punish one of us, he's going to have to punish all of us. Looks like you've got quite the loyal crew there, AJ. Yeah, I guess I do. Thanks, guys. Well, sir, I guess the case has been cracked wide open. It's up to you now. What's your verdict? In the end, the school board decided that no one would get expelled, though the entire newspaper staff was suspended from classes for a week, during which time they had to clean the dye from the pool and serve lunch in the cafeteria. The Chronicler was shut down for the rest of the semester, which was fair considering it was the e-paper that had caused the whole problem. But there was a chance it could be reopened after Christmas vacation on a provisional basis, provided that the staff proved they had learned their lesson. And school had settled back down to its natural sedate rhythm when one day, a week after the final showdown, AJ Harris came to call in my office. McKinney and Hayes investigate. Oh, AJ. Come on in. Sam? AJ. So, you're still mad? You used me as an alibi. You're lucky I left you in one piece. Right. A and again, I'm sorry. Sorry? You're sorry? Sam? Indoor voice, come on. So, why are you here, AJ? I, I gotta say, I I'm curious why you're still talking to me. Because if I had been in your position, I might have been tempted to do the same thing to keep my friends together. Another reason why you're an idiot. Wait, me or him? Both. Actually, that's sort of why I wanted to talk to you. I need your help. Well, well. You came to the right place. McKinney and Hayes, at your service. What do you need? Lost your muse? Did the ink run? Your paper circulation start going in squares? Are you done with the corny jokes? <laughs> Sorry. Continue. Uh, what do you need help with? Uh, the prank master. I want you to catch him. Wait, what do you mean? We caught you. No, AJ's just another one of his puppets. I'd be insulted, except you're right. I'm so stupid. Tell us what happened. About three weeks before the first incident, things were getting pretty desperate. No matter what we did, readership kept dropping. We were sure it was going to be our last semester as a team, then, well, we started to get all of these. Here, I, I made hard copies of all the emails we got. He promised he could help us if we followed his directions, and like I said, we were desperate. We started pulling pranks, following the instructions, but half the time we were just waiting to get caught. It got worse when we found out that you were investigating. I guess that's why you were hanging around so much. I had to know how close you were getting. I would stop talking before she decides to kick you out. Any idea who wrote these? No. Luke tried to trace the email account, but it was instantly shut down. We got this a few minutes later from a different account. Don't try to find me again. Well, we already knew he was paranoid, but this just sounds psycho. We just wanted to keep the paper. We never wanted it to get out of control. Yeah, well, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Please don't start monologuing. After we pulled the last stunt with our website, uh, when we thought we had thrown you off our scent, we promised each other we were done for good. Then I got this message. The fun doesn't stop until I say it does. Look at me, AJ. Because if you're trying to lie to throw us off your scent, I'm going to make you very, very sorry. Is this for real? I swear that it is. Look, we're through following his orders. I promise. But this guy, he's barely started. <laughs> So that's the story so far. We just thought you'd want to be kept in the loop. Jeez, and I thought I was crazy. Oh, you are. It's just a different kind of crazy. Look, guys, this prank master is more than just some kid causing mischief at this point. We've seen his pattern long enough to know how he works. He finds people who are desperate, like AJ, or seeking revenge, like Tommy or Jenny, and uses them for his own purposes. He creates chaos and confusion, and then he leaves his puppets behind to take the blame. 
I say it's about time he had a dose of his own medicine. He thinks he can play games with the people at this school, use them as pawns to get what he wants, but he's about to get a serious reality check. I'm going after him. It, but if this is too crazy for you, you can back off at any time. If you think you're catching this guy without my help, then you're the crazy one. Burners? Ah, oh, fine. I'll help. So where do we start? We need to find out who he is. Once we do that, the rest should be easy. Well, hopefully. I think I might be able to help with that. Remember how someone swiped the memory cards and all the cameras? Yeah. I didn't get all of them. This was one of the first models I made and is kind of outdated, so I didn't think to check it out at first. But I went through the footage an hour ago and... You got a photo of him? That's awesome. Well, no. The camera was facing towards the window, so what I actually got was this reflection as he walked by. But, but hey! Ta-da! Gives us a place to start! Huh. It kind of looks like that squirrel is growing out of his head. Is he wearing a long coat, or is that the tree trunk? Okay, I know it's not perfect, but let me work on it. I've got a friend who does facial reconstructions, and maybe she can lend me her equipment and clear this up a bit. You get his face, and I'll announce on the PA that you're a genius. Aw, uh, well, um, <clears throat> don't let me be the only one doing the work. Um, isn't there someone you can uh, interrogate? Sam, any ideas? I've got a couple. Let's go. Hey everyone, so that's it. That was the last episode of Mickey McKinney Season 1. Not to worry though, we'll be starting Season 2 soon and I promise it will be full of the same fun and adventure that you've been listening to in Season 1. Along with some more music, because who doesn't love a campfire song or two? And also, for those aspiring podcast writers out there, Faux Fiction Audio will be hosting a short story contest on April 15th, 2017. If interested, please send a family-friendly example to our website, faufictionaudio at gmail.com. So until then... Bye-bye. My throat's failing me. One second. Hold for drink. There we go. Hold for drink. All right, ready? Mm-hmm. I'd say just be very hostile and, like, kick them. Just constantly. <laughs> God, you're the worst. All right. You broke my heart. I trusted you. And then, and then McKinney's just like... This is why I don't get involved in girls. And then Sam's like, it's because you can't get girls. And then McKinney's like, don't make fun of me. In the end, the school board decided that no one would get expelled. I don't think I sound like that. <laughs> While you were in retirement, I did some digging in the dumpster and found two bottles of blue and red tie-dye. I thought they're... Mm, they'd been in there too long to get fingerprints. However, Burners found one or two partial prints in the inside of the lid. Great A take. Right? <laughs> okay, I'm taking that one again. While you were in retirement, I did some digging in the dumpster and found two bottles of blue and red tie-dye. I thought they'd been in there too long to get fingerprints. However, Burners found one or two partial prints in the inside of the lid. I said found. That's not a word. Found. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that again. <laughs> Sam could run so Sam could run someone up the flagpole. I bet she could scare someone into confessing. Use them as pawns to get what he wants. But he's about to get a seer. Mm, damn it. <laughs> dang it. Dang it. <clears throat> I say it's about time he had a dose of his own medicine. He thinks he can play games with the people at this school, use them as pawns to get what he wants. But he's about to get a. Mm. Well then, I don't think you messed up as bad as you think you did. That was a horrible. Sorry for butchering your work, Ruby. Come on, Hercules. Let's see what. Let's see you move the. Mm, dang it. <clears throat> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Mickey is dying. You can probably close this. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Lucas is dying. Mickey is. His his spirit's broken. <clears throat> okay. Still, are we good? Yes. All right. <clears throat> Bernie's, I don't have time for this. I got an audit. <clears throat> you got a what? I got an audit. <laughs> Audited. I should have known he was pulling my leg. He lied to me. <clears throat> you get his face. I'll announce on the PA that you're a gene. Wait. Yeah. My bad. <clears throat> I thought we were making a list. <laughs> okay. You get his face. That wasn't even my voice. All right. 
You get his face? You get his face, and I'll announce that just like at the very end. <clears throat> yeah, like he's talking like that the whole time, and he's just like, you get his. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, and you used her as an alibi when... <clears throat> and you used her as an alibi for when everyone decorated the lawn. Besides, Bernard's heard AJ saying that they were pulling two more pranks. I'm gonna... Wow. All right. Sorry. I'm sorry. It's a rough day. All right. And so we're gonna roll into this bad boy. Episode 11, Mickey McKinney, Confessions and Conclusions, Part 3, was written and directed by Ruby Fink, with music by Leon Biscara. Faux Family Cast includes the voices of Lucas Guerrero as Mickey McKinney. Oops. <coughs> so, you are saying that you are all guilty for these pranks? You're making fun of how I speak. Hey everyone, so that's it. That was the last episode of Mickey McKinney Season 1. Not to worry, though, we'll be starting Season 2 soon, and I promise it will be full of the same fun and adventure that you've been listening to in Season 1. Along with some more music, because who doesn't love a campfire song or two? And also, for those aspiring podcast writers out there, Faux Fiction Audio will be hosting a short story contest on April 15th, 2017. If interested, please send a family-friendly example to our website, faufictionaudio at gmail.com. So until then, bye bye Episode 11, Mickey McKinney, Confessions and Conclusions, Part 3, was written and directed by Ruby Fink, with music by Leon Biscara. Faux Family Cast includes the voices of Lucas Guerrero as Mickey McKinney, Violet Fink as Sam Hayes, Leon Labra as Berners, CJ Longhammer as Sergeant Rhodes, and Dr. Schatz, Brandon Seaslack as AJ Harris, Lindsay Werner as Cindy, Shayna Hammer as Brittany, Corey McCary as Luke, and me, Zach Johnson, as your announcer. This recording, characters, and the situations within are property of their author and creator and protected by copyright. So until the next time, Faux Fiction Audio says goodbye. Hi, this is John Bell. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. In my podcast, Bells in the Battery, I usually surpass a thousand words. Why does he? But for every episode, there is also a picture. You mean the itty bitty picture that you see when you bring up the episode? Yes, that's called a thumbnail. They're drawn on thumbnails? But now you can see all the thumbnail pictures in large format by going to the Bells in the Bat Free gallery. Just go online to thebatfree.com. That's T H E B A T F R Y dot com. And click on Gallery. That's G A L L E. I think they can figure that out. You'll see all the pictures for all the episodes that were created by Jeff Music, along with other guest artists like the Lavalier Brothers and famous animation director Dan Reba. Well, he knows one celebrity and he really wants you to know about it. You'll also see lots of fan art art over the years, and a few surprises. So when you're in the mood for a picture instead of a thousand words, especially his words, words, go to thebatfree.com and click on gallery. And be sure to clean your thumbnails before viewing.